colleagues here and online. It sounds like the job is done. And the light in the tunnel is not a train, but really enlightenment. From Leanne's summary, I unfortunately couldn't be here the whole time, or most of the time I wasn't. But from Leanne's summary, it seems like participation was good. The learning was extensive. The diagnosis was sound. And the understanding of what we need to do going forward is very clear. From the CG standpoint, of course, Ereka would continue to be an important part of how we take this forward. But Ereka is not a government. It's a facilitator. It's a supporter. The real action is how do we, as CG, support governments to do all the things that our colleague from FAO just spoke about. And in Leanne's notes, I was very pleased to see that you said that the focus on One Health must be on proactive prevention and preparedness plans developed and tested. I think this is the holy grail Proactive prevention and preparedness. Song simple, but this is really loaded. Prevention would mean early detection, for example, or even finding things before they come to light. Now, most of us know how to investigate, looking for things that we know exist. But many of the emerging diseases we have not seen before. So how are we going to be able, using our great scientific expertise from the world over, to be able to detect, detect things before they actually become a problem? That's part of the prevention. Prevention also means widespread surveillance that you can detect things early. As I discussed on the first day, the cost of control is strongly correlated with time. The more time, the higher the cost to control. So early prevention is of course important. And of course, this big challenge here of preparedness preparedness. This for HPAI, each country had to prepare a preparedness plan. And so we need this sort of thing at, at all levels. But note the, from our colleague at FAO who just presented, a note is called to elevate where one health sits in the government's architecture to put as high as in the prime minister president's office. Well, that was almost what had to happen for HPAI preparedness plan because no ministry had the authority to commandeer the others. The only place you can commandeer all the ministries is at the supra ministry level, which is the president's or prime minister's office. But I don't know if the prime minister president has sufficient time <laughs> to deal with matters like these. So we need certainly the authority, but somehow we need to also, I think, develop a, an approach to One Health, which changes the in institutional perspective from when there's a problem, each ministry says, what do you want from me? So we contribute in relation to what we think is needed rather than 
how can I tackle this problem? So not just what my ministry do, tell me what I'm doing and get on with it and get out, but what is it needs to be done? And I think if we bring that sort of new thinking and combine that with changes in the institutional architecture, we'll go far. So I'm here to say that from a CG standpoint, this is really urgent and important, but the CG is not a government, the CG support governments, and that's what we aim to do. I have spoken almost entirely, and a good bit of the discussions I listened to had a slant of, from a pandemic standpoint, zoonotic disease with pandemic potential. And I can understand why that has been the focus. It is strategic, of course, but we should not forget that we must deal with also the endemic diseases that places a heavy burden on the farmers we are supposed to be supporting. And of course, uh, consumers as well through uh, food safety and so on. But it doesn't sell. Endemic diseases, going to donors, asking money for endemic diseases doesn't sell very well. What sells is pandemic. So our, our approach needs to be selling pandemic. And if you get funding for pandemic diseases, you certainly also have funding for endemic diseases. So a bit of strategy as to how we go about this. I want to thank all of you, my colleagues at ILRI, and all our partners who facilitated this. And to say that as CGIR, we are committed to this. We will seek to get support for it. Uh, we will work with all of you to make this a mainstream effort. But we must commit ourselves to what you said already, that we must have a focus on proactive prevention and preparedness. We must contribute something that is usable, that governments can implement just analyzing the problems and talking about the problems doesn't very help doesn't help governments so let's make sure we do what you said here you do and i take the promise as a serious one that it will not be just us talking to ourselves that you have identified some new skills which need to be brought in public health uh, city planners and others. But let's get also the medics in and the environmentalists in and so on. So I hope that with this diagnosis and potential treatment that you've offered, we have a way forward that we can implement in an actionable way that is of real benefit to the people who can use it. So thank you for these contributions. It is certainly will set us an ORECA and the CG on a clearer path. And we look forward to continuing to work in this area and to keep this forefront, hopefully. And I would look to our colleagues here to ensure that this is not a, a conference and then we write the proceedings and we put them away. This is a conference which will help us to be more forceful to uh, mainstream One Health in, in not only the CG, but in the countries in which we work. So thank you very much. I look forward to learning from Bernard and Leanne and the rest of the team here about what concrete we must do and can do to take this forward. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>